for the next topic i invite dr wangnu sir he will be speaking on the cardio renal metabolic approach for diabetes management role of sclt2 and dpp4 fixed drug combination good morning everybody and first of all let me congratulate the organizing team of the speedcon for having this wonderful show of the scientific extravaganza a young brigade of the endocrinologists and it's my proud privilege to be speaking in all the speedcon so far after having learned about the mitochondrial modulators let's talk what is available now and how best we can give our patients a 360 degree protection against the cardiac complication renal complication and of course the glycemic control what we call the cardio renal metabolic approach for the diabetes management and today i'm going to give you a, a glimpse of the combination the fixed dose combination of sglt2 and the dpc dpp4 inhibitor all of you know that uncontrolled hb1c is a major concern globally and as i already said recent publication from mon group at all it was in the media also that around 70% of the people they don't attain the target hb1c and on an average the target hb1c in indians hovers around 8.5 it just a question in the mind that the audience who are sitting here among your patients with type 2 diabetes receiving glucose lowering therapy approximately what proportion have hb1c more than 8% obviously it is going to be very high as the recent study has shown roughly around 70% initial data among the asian indians what they showed that the in the clinically diagnosed new type 2 diabetes among asian indians by the ramchandran group showed a average hb1c around 9 and while screening when they were diagnosed to be diabetic the average hb1c was 8.3 here comes the big million dollar question that early intervention increase the probability of the sustained control early you do the aggressive control the better is the outcome in the near future even the ukpds has taught us that even a modest reduction in the glycemia reduces the risk of diabetic complication in the long run and you have seen this slide a number of times that a 1% reduction in the hb1c reduces the death from diabetes to the tune of 21% myocardial infarction microvascular complication up to the tune of 37% and peripheral vascular disorder up to the tune of 43% let me build up a case this is a case based module just for educational purpose so that we can think where we can place the role of the fdc of the sglt2 and the dp4 inhibitor is a 47 year old male smoker he has been diabetic only for last 2 years associated comorbid condition was hypertension and he is always fearful of the hypoglycemia after he saw one of his close relative who was hospitalized with the severe hypoglycemic reaction recently and currently he is on metformin a, what is the maximum recommended dose is and blood pressure is taking fdc of the calcium channel blockers and arbs and for lipids he is on rosuvastatin he is still under not under control a1c of 8.6 is obese bmi 32 and homa insulin resistance index is 4.1 and you can easily calculate the homa ir by multiplying the fasting blood sugar in nanomoles with the insulin in internationally divided by 22.5 and our cutoff of the homa ir is 
any home IR more than 2.4 is thought to the patient is having underlying insulin resistance. He is still having uncontrolled lipids in the form of LDL-107 and TGA-155. So basically our concerns for these patients when we try to put up the positioning of this particular FDC, his main problem is the obesity, smoking and the multiple comorbid condition like dyslipidemia and the hypertension. He is having uncontrolled HbA1c and he is already having a fear of hypoglycemia because he has seen his one of the dear friend getting admitted with the hypoglycemic reaction. So he is already building a bad glycemic legacy for the increasing complication in the near future. We have multiple op options to offer to these patients. Can we add a SU? Can we add a DPP? Can we add a SJT2? Or we have the option of adding a GRP over a receptor agonist or a basal insulin or a FDC or the SJT2 and DPP for inhibitor. Like where should we go from here? Like if you want to go to the stepwise approach, no proactive approach, where you think there is no sense of urgency, can always step the treatment later on. And it's very easy to add on the treatment the, during the normal course of the disease. And you are also bothered about the cost and the multiple pills. Early combinations will help you, the healthcare providers, to get the patient into target early and before it is too late and position for a better future and avoid losses throughout the delay and you have to improve the motivation and the adherence. You know, by the time you try to add insulin during the course of the treatment of the diabetes in your routine clinical practice, because of the substantial clinical inertia is almost eight years patient has been on that above the target before the patient adds insulin. So you have just missed the train. If you would have started early in the course of the treatment, you would have maintained the patient on target throughout these seven years. Then coming to the purpose or the rationale of giving such kind of the patient where they are not, they are fearful of having multiple drugs at the same time, they get the high target HbA1c. You know, if the HbA1c is higher, the HbA1c lowering impact of the DPP4 inhibitor is slightly greater as compared to the HJT2. But the HJT2 are associated with the greater HbA1c reduction than DPP4. In cases of HbA1c more than 8, when you give the combination of the FDC or the DPP4 or HJT2, on an ongoing add-on metformin therapy, it will help patient to achieve glycemic control better and early. If you see the various literature, depending upon the baseline HbA1c, how much impact the FDC of EMPA and LENA gives on the, depending upon the baseline HbA1c. Higher the baseline HbA1c, you can see a reduction up to the tune of 1.84, while if the baseline HbA1c is low, you can get maximum A1C reduction of 1.19. And also, early achievement and the durability of the action, long term. We have the, the long term impact of the HB1C reduction, which was sustained up to 52 weeks in patients uncontrolled with the metformin. It is not only the initial aggressive control. It is also important to see the durability of the drug to maintain the HbA1c. Further HbA1c reduction, if you have an initial baseline HbA1c 8.5, what I showed me initial slide, you can achieve a reduction up to 1.84. Now let's talk of when we are positioning this drug in the early course of the treatment of diabetes, how many percentage of the patients will be able to achieve less than 7% at week 24? And on the left hand panel, you see the drug naive patient. On the right hand panel, the patient on already ongoing background metformin therapy. And you can see like 55% and the 61% in both the cases can achieve HbA1c target of less than 7%. Of 
After having said that about the HP1C reduction, let's talk about some of the extra pancreatic and the pleiotropic impacts of the FDC or the HGLT200 DPP4 inhibitor. There has some impact on the weight, the blood pressure, and the serum uric acid, which was found in this 52 weeks data. And the body weight reduction is on an average between 3 to 3.5 kg, and the BP reduction, both in the systolic and diastolic, is up to the tune of 3 to 2 mm. And there is also an, an, another significant impact on the serum uric acid reduction <coughs> because hyperuricemia has also been found to be an independent risk factor for the ongoing cardiovascular complication. Now coming to the, with the simple dreaded hyperglycemic reaction which this patient was afraid because he seen his friend getting admitted with a severe hyperglycemic reaction. Let's see what this FDC offers you about the hypoglycemic incidence. And despite the high efficacy, there is no chances of additional hypoglycemic risk with the FDC of this DPP and the SJT2. And also, most of the people are basically concerned about the higher incidence of generative urinary tract infection, particularly the fungal, when you are using the SJT2 inhibitors alone. And in in my clinical practice, I have seen many of the patients, particularly the postmenopausal, the elderly patients who are not able to maintain hygiene, or those who are having associated autonomic bladder, where we have seen a lot of problem with the IGT2. And many of the patients, they withdrew, withdrew the drug quite early in the course of the treatment. But there is an additional advantage if you add the DP4 in beta along with the HGLT2 inhibitor because some of the enzymes on the bacteria or fungi may be inhibited by the concomitant use of the DPP4 inhibitor along with the HG2 and that is our clinical experience also that very few incidents of genito urinary tract infections are not being seen when we switch the patient from a monotherapy to the dual FDC. And also the complementary mode of actions of the HGLT2 and the DPP4 inhibitor. You can see almost the ominous octet, the eight out of the eight core defects are being targeted by the combination of the HGLT2 and the DPP4 inhibitors with an ongoing metformin therapy. So dear friends, if you want a powerful and early efficacy, you have a sulfonylurea with you along with the metformin, which was the top in the Today's morning, where he talked about the modern sulfonuria, which is still being used as a powerful tool for the greater efficacy on the ongoing metformin therapy. But apart from the powerful and early efficacy, if you want to have the low risk of the hypoglycemia, then you have to take the combination of the DPP4 inhibitor and the metformin, where they have the least possibility of the hypoglycemic reaction. But overall, if you want a weight and BP reduction, CV and the renal benefits, and the, the powerful and early efficacy and low risk of hypoglycemia, all these attributes can be given to the patients by giving a combination of HGL to DPP4 inhibitor on the ongoing metformin therapy. So this holistic approach or the 360 degree approach of giving the patient cardio metabolic renal protection is by giving this FDC over and above the ongoing metformin therapy. We know this FDC is available in two doses, having 10 milligram and 25 milligram. I often use the 10 milligram doses because majority of my patients, they get good benefit with the 10 milligram. Hardly few patients require 25 when I am concerned yeah, that they are not losing much weight because of the higher initial BMI. I might switch them from 10 to 25 milligram just to have a more uh, desired weight loss. And also, the com combining two pills in, the one, in one pill also increases the adherence of the treatment because the diabetics, apart from the oral antidiabetic drugs, are having other multiple drugs like statins, BP medicines, so many other things. So in order to reduce the pill burden, it is better to give the patient two drugs in one pill. So the adherence and the persistence of taking this drug continues in this patient. 
and this adherence and the persistence will decrease the number of the emergency department visits and the number of hospitalization. So let's see the 360 degree, the initial impact of the both the FDC like HGLT2, its impact on the heart failure and CV death and its impact on the three point ways and then death by any cause, the mortality data is very good with the empagliflozin, which is with no other HGLTD shows. CV death, reduction of the nephropathy or the progression of the diaptic nephropathy is again a good example of the HGLT2. We had a lot of renal dedicated trials with the empagliflozins and the empa kidney is about to be released where they are shown and where they are taken the patient with the low GFR as low as less than 20, while the DAPA CKD had taken recruited patient with the GFR of less than 30, and ultimately the renal composite endpoints have been shown to be reduced up to the tune of 46%. A little bit of the some of the literature, the Carminina, where the DP4 inhibitor Lina was used, was shown to be associated with a significant reduction in the albuminuria production, a relative risk reduction of the 14%. Now let's, when we see the combining the both the effects, we have a ample evidence of the CVA renal production with the empagliflozin, and linagliptin has already been shown to be CV neutral, and renal safety has all been produced in the carmelina, and ease of use of this drug. When we combine these both the drugs, empagliflozin, FDC, we have faster target to achieve lesser chances of genito tract infection, minimizing the hypoglycemic reaction, complementary mode of action, once daily dosing using regimen and reducing the pill. And also, when you are able to get the desired effects of this FDC on the patient benefits, you are able to save many of the, what you call the cost effectiveness is important and you can save a good amount of percentage while looking by giving the protection in the near future, you can save a lot of money in treating the complication. There has been some real world evidence with the EMPA and the LENA FDC, the multiple real world evidence studies which have been conducted across the India, evolving more than 1,200 patients, and they have shown a significant reduction in the A1C, fasting plasma glucose, PPG, weight and uh, blood pressure. So, close my talk, we let's come back to this patient, that we added EMPA and LENA FDC, we intensify the lifestyle modi modification, intensify the blood pressure control, and we told him to stop the smoking cessation. So from a glucocentric approach to a holistic approach for the patients, in terms of the metabolic perspective, CV perspective, and the renal perspective, we present to you a FDC, which basically covers the, all the three important parameters, what you look into an ideal oral anti diaptic drug. Thank you very much for your kind listening, and EGFR has been now recommended officially to use of HGLT2 up to 30, and maybe when the EMPA CKD comes out, we'll be having another indication up to less than 20 EGFR. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for explaining wonderfully the holistic approach of this FDC of EMPA and Linagliptin, which cover, covers the ominous octate and leads to not only sustained and robust glycemic benefits, but also cardiovascular, renal, and visceral metabolic benefits. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Wangnu, sir. I have a small query uh, from the speaker. Sir, uh, in properly selected patient, can we start this combination right from the word go? Yes. See, the early combination of the FDC has been already, not with this combination like Wildagrypt and Metformin has been already approved and proved by the verified trial. And where they have shown even the leading organization like ACE, now says that if your baseline HV1C is more than 7.5, you can start the FDC right from the very beginning, number one. While the ADA shows if the baseline HV1C is 1.5% above the target, that is 7, 
may be up to 8.5, then you are basically allowed to use FDC from the very beginning, from the day one. ACE is more stringent, and they can say you can start FDC from the day one with the HB1, C1, 7.5. So on those lines, you can start this. We know the SGL today has been recommended as a tier one drug even before the metformin by the, all the leading organization because this beautiful impact on the renal safety, cardiac safety, impact on the hospitalization of the heart failure. And if you are combining a DPP-1 inhibitor, nothing like that. You are free to combine even under HB1C or 7.5. So metformin is not a must for each and every patient if this combination is used? Yeah, but if you are using this combination from the very beginning, not necessarily you can start with metformin and then use this combination. I told you, you can straightway use the FDC and you have a recent trial verify which has shown beautiful results with the initial FDC. I have seen a uh, few of my colleagues and uh, uh, physicians, they are writing uh, this combination of Empalina of 25 by 5 strength as a half tablet uh, daily. Uh, did that justify the prescription? No, that is not justified. Because the, the Lina, dose of Lina has been reduced to half yeah, in that case. No. It has to be different combination. Don't tell the patient to break the tablet. Even pharma people, they press on a uh, few no. physicians that just to cut I down the cost know. of therapy. No. You can use half tablet of 25 by 5 strength. No, I don't, don't do that. Neither there is ah, any that recommendation is not to half the, get the half tablet done. Thank you, sir.